I'm in. I I'm am. in. in. <laughs> and Jensen <laughs> joins us now. Jensen, Welcome. thanks a million for coming in. So I remember this so vividly because, because this team kind of came from the ashes and won the champion. It was when Formula One really excited me when I was watching it. Um, where, how, where did the idea of the documentary come from? It wasn't me, uh, but I... Congratulations, I, I Tom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was called up um, by Keanu Reeves and his team. Uh, and said, Must have been a weird call. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> uh, and, you know, would you like to meet for lunch? We want to talk about... Uh, the, go for lunch the, with him? The, the brawn year and whether we, can, we wow. can make a documentary about it. It's like, amazing. So, yeah, all, everything fell into place. Um, and I have to say... I mean, the story's already there, right? Yeah. The, the, the pound, the team that was bought for a pound has this massive high of winning lots of races at the start of the season, and then it hits the floor and we're struggling, and then we win the championship at the end. Oh, I've just given it away. <laughs> um, but, um, Do you still get excited watching the documentary to know what's going to happen, even though you know what's going to happen? <laughs> excited. The, the thing is, when you, when you look at it on a piece of paper, it's like, that's never going to happen. You know, it's, it's the Hollywood movie that is, isn't realistic. Yeah. Um, but it did happen. But when you're living in it, Nowhere near as fun as watching it because it was so <laughs> stressful that season. Um, but I have to say that, you know, with, with Keanu Reeves doing the, the, in all of the interviews with everyone, you kind of open up a little bit. And, yeah. you know, when Keanu asks you a question, you answer it. So, so uh, I didn't it was... know he was a massive fan of no. Formula One at all. When did, was, yeah. did you know that beforehand? Uh, he's been to a few races, um, but I think he, he was asked the question, you know, have you heard about this, this 2009 season where this team was bought for a pound and they went on to win the championship? And he's like, Sorry, what? Mm. And, uh, you know, his creative juices started flowing. And, um, yeah, and he came up with this idea. Because when the team was bought for a pound, and did you think, well, I'm going to stay with it, presumably under contract, but you're going to stay with this team, did you have any idea that you were going to be as success, that year was going to be as successful as it was? No. No. I so mean, what, I, tr I tried to get out of it. Did you? But, yeah, because, I mean, you, you, the team didn't, it didn't look like it was going to exist. Yeah. So I asked around and I spoke, my, my manager spoke to Christian Horner about a drive at his team and the junior team, and they said, no, we'll, you know, it's uh, all the contracts are done. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, well, let's let's work hard to make this happen. And we we found some people that were interested in in owning the team, but I don't think it would have worked out that way. And Ross coming in and, and actually buying the team for a pound with his leadership, mm -hmm. it's a big reason why this worked out. But you know, we had to cut and shut the car as well. The car was made to work with one type of engine, and then we had to go and ask, plead for somebody to give us an engine to put in the back. To fit it in because the car. You, because you forget the legacy of this team has gone on really to be the Mercedes team, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where So Mercedes what happened then? So Honda pulled out and you were left with literally in no chaos, the, the whole team. So 600 people were yeah. about to be made redundant. 700 people. 700 people. In the team, which is mad in itself, right? To build two racing cars to go racing. Yeah. Um, and Honda owned the team at that time. So they pulled out and they took their engines with them. We still had the, the car itself and the aerodynamic package. I mean, there's a lot of money that was spent on this car. It's, it's not, it's not a, a fluke that we were competitive yeah. in yeah. 2009, but then we had to get another engine and the guys did an amazing job of fitting it together, went testing. We were quickest at the first test that we did and everyone had been testing for days before that. So that's when it clicked and you know, we thought we've, we've got something special. It must be the most exciting. When, you, when you're in a season where you've, you know you've got a shot of winning the world, Title. It must because we look at it now, and wrongly we presume it's a relatively easy thing to do, right? Because it isn't. And I've been to like races, I've been to pole position, and, you know, and you, you know, you're a fan as well. It's so hard. It takes so much out of you, and you know, it does. this is kind of like meeting between car and man, and, you know. It's so, so, but when you're there and you can see it, like you know, I've got a shot of winning this. Do you remember that it. fondly now? It makes it worse <laughs> because you you put so much pressure on yourself because you think, this might be my only chance mm. of reaching my dream that I've had since I was eight years old. And uh, everything was going so well at the start of the year, winning races. But then when you're winning, everything else is a failure. And you see that with Max Verstappen, how annoyed he gets yeah. when they're not quite quick enough. And you put so much pressure on yourself. And then when it does dip off, it just spiralled for me. Mentally, I struggled with it massively. I wasn't in the right frame of mind. And it took a long time to get out of that rut. And it took people around me, including my late father, to really help me yeah. win this title. So. Wow. Um, t can I just ask a quick question with regards to um, the actual documentary? Because it doesn't just follow stuff on the track, does it? It's stuff behind the scenes. Did you learn quite a lot that you didn't know? It, that's a good point. I did. Because when you're in, in the moment, you, you're just focused on your job, um, you know, getting the job done. But there was so much going on behind the scenes. 
you know, where the team didn't have any money and we were owed money mm -hmm. um, by, um, by Bernie uh, Eccleston. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then you had FOTA, which was all of the teams wanting to break away from Formula One and start their own category. Wow. So Just there's really so quickly, much going on. Because we've only got 30 seconds left. I know you've, you've ridden that car, but if you, can you tell us what you're going to do next? Because you are going to ride drive again, aren't you? Tell yes. us the exciting news. Uh, well, it's not an exclusive, I'm sorry <laughs> oh, to say. But, <laughs> exactly, but I, I, I will be racing next year in endurance racing. And for me, that's where it's at. I love that team atmosphere. Fighting like for Le Mans victory. Le Mans. Oh, amazing. It never leaves Jensen, the thank you, mate. All episodes of Brawl on the Impossible Formula One story will be available on Disney Plus on Wednesday, the 15th of November. Thanks, Thanks Jensen.